Welcome to part two of the epic journey of the uh, uh, brewing machine basically I guess from the other famous two brewing machines. <sighs> I don't know whether you can see the steam but it's pretty damn cold in the uh, brewery today. So any road up, what am I doing next? Well what I've decided to do is to, to put the, I'm going to work from here I think so that I can utilise this space and I've got the motor that's going to fit in here somewhere I'm going to do that next and I'm thinking of securing it with some bar uh, um, I've also liked the idea of using the old sparge arm and I thought if I somehow point from this, sorry, from there into there into into this, and then up with the pipes through the wood into there and onto the sparge arm at the top, so that I've got continuous sparge arm um, feeding its own wort, if you like. So that's my plan. I'm going to try and do it that way. So the next step is to get this electric motor in and, and running. So uh, I'll speak to you in a sec. <laughs> the motor into the bottom part of this and it's got like a, a screw bracket there that came with it which uh, obviously fixes to that it was already uh, on the motor and then I've just found a little bracket under there that fits to a nut at the back there so that's pretty rigid, that's not going to go anywhere. So next to see how it wires up I suppose and see if it actually works. Right, I've done a bit of thinking about uh, the water circulation and what I've decided to do, rightly or wrongly, is to use some old washing machine tubing. Now I've cut the end off this I don't know whether you can see it. And I don't think that's rubber, it's like a, a plastic. So I'm hoping that I don't get a rubbery smell. And then, down here look, I bought some bits and bobs from Wilco again. So I've got a couple of these to adjust the flow a couple of circlips to bolt the, the rubber mountings. I've got a back plate because what I have got, I've got one of these uh, a test switch thingy to make it safe that'll go on there. Uh, I've got a bag of nuts and bolts on Wilco again, fill your own bag up 199 or 195 so I've got a couple of these and uh, what I've done is I've made an hole in the back plate and the back plate of this, I don't know what you call it, the back of it anyway and I brought one of the tubes round there that will go in that one and then I'm going to do another one there I don't know whether you can see it into that other one and that will go out and it'll come up here somehow and uh, any road up that's me uh, that's me plan <laughs> whether it'll work or not or whether you'll make some comments about being a prat but there you go now um, somebody did suggest that uh, I might get a rubbery smell but in a, a rubbery taste in the uh, in the beer 
but I don't think I will because that uh, pump with the rubbers on I've been it's been ru running a couple of years with just water going through it so uh, it should take any rubber smell out of the, of the thought but we'll soon see. Right I've just finished the wiring for the uh, the brewing machine so uh, let me do you a twizzle. Right basically I've took the STC 1000 and uh, I've whacked it in that bit and done the wiring at the back and then I've got my motor down there and I've also got my cutoff switch so if I switch on that will come on and uh, what that does I've got a switch there for my pump I'll show you that running in a minute that's a live plug there and what I've done I've plugged the STC into there and then this plug whoops that plug if I plug my boiler into it it'll cut off at the right temperature and I've tried it on a drill so that works and there's me just uh, me uh, me wire for the temperature so I'll just show you this pump whirling you'll hear it so that's all working. So the next step is a bit of plumbing I guess and see if the pump's too much for it but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> 